Hi everyone, welcome back to the Bible Project Podcast. I'm reaching this end of this section uh, from Genesis chapter 12, which is often referred to as the call of Abraham. I hope you find it enjoyable and beneficial. And my purpose today is to try and uh, sum it all up for us. And just remind you that uh, the transcript of all of these talks is always available in the best place to find it is in the episode notes of any audio version of the podcast. There will be a link there in the YouTube video, but if you want to go direct to it, just follow the link to the Bible Project podcast, uh, which is the, the daily one. So anyway, the call of Abraham, and how do we sum it up? Well, when God called Abraham, he called him to be a blessing. And to do that, in order to receive that, Abraham had to respond in faith, obedience, praise, and proclamation. That's what we said last time. So putting this in a very straightforward way, I believe Abraham simply took God at his word. And as a result of that, he was blessed. And, of course, he was then able to be a blessing to other people. So in short, God will bless those who trust him and obey him. That's fairly straightforward, isn't it? Now, this is a very, very important passage of Scripture. So I just want to try and make some final observations for us and pull this all together. Because this this passage forms an introduction to the great historical development that we will witness that will lead to the foundation of the nation of Israel, the prophecies of the Messiah, the appearance of Jesus Christ, and of course, eventually, the establishment of the Christian church. You see, God here calls Abraham and he promised to give him a piece of land. And this is what you might refer to as the seed plot of the Old Testament, because through him and his family line, a Messiah will come. And this is the creation of a record uh, described in the Old Testament but prophesied and witnessed by the New Testament writers. So this passage and the chapters that are going to follow are not only the key to the book of of Genesis, but they are in a sense a key to unlocking the whole Bible. You see, the story of Abraham is the story of a man of faith. More specifically though, it is a story of a man of faith who will face many obstacles. As we progress through this book, we shall see Each obstacle will test his faith, but it will also provide an opportunity for him to grow stronger in his faith. Each of the barriers he must overcome, but he will have to overcome them with God's help. And each of these problems will constitute a challenge to Abraham's faith in some way or another. Each problem Abraham encounters is typical of problems that every believer will encounter in their life, particularly particularly if you're seeking to live a life of faith. Consequently, that tells me that each episode of Abraham's life can teach us something, can teach us something about God's power, God's faithfulness, and it can help all of us and encourage us all to live by faith and obedience. Let me just list for you some of the obstacles that Abraham will face over the coming chapters. His wife will be seen to be incapable of producing an heir, though God promises him one. Abraham at one point will have to leave the land that God said that he and his family would inherit. Abraham and his whole family will face mortal danger whilst in Egypt. And Abraham will father an illegitimate child through a concubine, which both threatens his wife's reputation and the legitimacy of this family line. And all these events that occur appear to fly in the face of the promise as the covenant that God has made with them. We will then see that Abraham will have to learn to trust God in spite of all these mistakes, some of them of his own making and some of them external obstacles. In the very next episode, which we're going to look at next time, we'll see Abram go into Egypt. But what does he do when he gets there? He will lie about his wife. And that means that she will almost end up in Pharaoh's bed. So this is not him exactly fully trusting the Lord yet, is it? This is just the introduction 
when he start this is the point at which i said he's starting out trusting the lord but with some partiality but we will see him grow in faith and obedience until his faith is truly mature now we believers all have a similar journey a similar calling to walk by faith and obedience in order to become part of god's program in our lives and in our families and and no doubt uh, uh, his plans in us to bless others and maybe even the whole world. This is the pattern that's been set here. Abraham's example of faith and obedience is therefore a model for all believers, all of us, to forsake everything and to try and serve God and thereby become a blessing, a real blessing to others. When it comes to being blessed by God, I believe this passage can teach us three really important things. And I'd like to end this passage uh, that we've been looking at by summarizing those for you. Number one, it tells us to believe God. Abraham did nothing particularly special in order to receive the individual promise and blessing. He was not blessed because of his background. He came from an adulterous family. So it doesn't matter what your background is. He also had been a sinner and was a sinner on multiple occasions but yet still Abraham believed so it always starts for everyone for all of us for you and I with just simply believing and embracing God's promise believe that Jesus Christ God's son came and died for you to reserve, resolve and make peace with God for all those things in your life and your background that have gone wrong Salvation for us too today is nothing more than believing God's promise to you of eternal life through Jesus Christ. Number two, try to obey. Abraham was richly blessed in his life, but that blessing always comes about through obedience, and it's the same for us. Believe and obey. Well, one more thing, and this is super important. We are to bless others. That's what this passage teaches us. Abraham praised God and he blessed the Lord by proclaiming his name to others. So blessing can of course, and primarily should be doing something practical and loving to help other people, but it's sometimes nothing more than including a testimony of the blessings in your life and crediting God for them. If God blesses you, then you need to make sure that you bless others. Are you the sort of person who, when you arrive in a room, makes everybody happy? Are you the kind of person that everybody's pleased to see and feels lifted when you walk into a room? That's quite a challenge, isn't it? Well, I believe this passage tells us, and I'm talking to me as well, is that we are all to try and become that person in Christ Jesus. When divine favour has been bestowed on us, as it has, it's not just for our benefit. It's meant to be for the benefit of everyone around us. One of my very early Christian mentors in life said the object of your life now is to always leave people better than you find them. That's a challenge, isn't it? To build everybody up, he said. To build everybody up that you meet, to build them up in Christ. That's a principle that I believe we should always try and keep in the back of our minds as Christian believers. So if you really want to be blessed, perhaps the starting point should be our desire to go and bless others. I'll leave you with that one simple concluding principle. Trust and obey the Lord and, be, and thereby you will be blessed by him and live a life sharing that blessing with others. Thanks for joining me. And I'll see you back here very soon on the Daily Bible Project podcast. Bye for now.